Hello, friends. We praise the Lord for another day. This is day five of our 10 days of prayer journey beginning this beautiful year of 2024. Friends, I am so excited because though we're already half of the 10 days of prayer, and yet God still has a lot in store for us. And God will keep on revealing himself to each one of us for us to constantly behold him so that our characters will be changed from glory to glory. Before we continue any further, I invite you to pray with me as we seek the Lord for us to be with him in his presence. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much and we praise you for thou art faithful. We thank you, dear Lord, for you cannot even deny your faithfulness. I thank you, Lord, for giving us this another undeserved but solid privilege to study your words, to know the principles on faith and how we can prioritize you more than anything else. One thing we ask is for us to be ready to receive your Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that will bring deep conviction into our hearts. But not only that, because he desires for us to be converted, to experience the conversion into the truth. So dear Heavenly Father, I pray that as the Holy Spirit moves us, I pray that we will not resist. I pray that we will be willing to receive him into our hearts. Father, thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you that he accepts us for who we are, but he does not leave us from where we are. Thank you for your invitation for us to climb up higher and higher into your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen, friends. Again, welcome to day five of our 10 days of prayer. Yesterday, we've learned through Sister Jonah the freedom of a focused life of simplicity. And we learned the principles and the desire of Jesus for us to know the message behind what fasting is. Fasting makes space and fasting not only helps us to, um, you know, skip meals <laughs> and be healthier, but the sole purpose and the main objective of fasting is not to receive answers from the Lord from our prayers, but it is to get God himself, to have Jesus Christ himself, to receive him fully into our hearts, to make space in our hearts fully for him. And so for our day five, the title is Focusing on Things That Matter in Our Prayers. Again, the title is Focusing on Things That Matter in Our Prayers. Before we proceed to our study, I would like again to encourage everyone. I believe that you have already chosen or God has revealed it to you already. The seven people, families, or ministries that God wants you to pray for and with. So, But if you have not started yet, it's not too late. Again, this is just, you know, a beginning, a warm up to a deeper prayer life for year 2024, not just for this 10 days of prayer, not just for the season, but all throughout the year. So pick seven names, seven ministries or seven families that the Lord is convicting you to pray for and to pray with them. Then write the relationship and the promises claimed, memorize the scriptures and wherever you are, whether you're walking, whether you're folding clothes, doing daily chores, and especially in your private time with the Lord, utter this, this promises, uh, claim these promises in prayer. And then write the prayers you have for that specific person or family or, or the ministry you are praying for. And if the Lord deeply convicts you, I encourage you, friends, to call these people, or if you're with them, approach them to have prayer time with you. So this is very beautiful, friends. This is going to um make our prayer life even more, you know, 
interactive <laughs> and it will um give us that desire to know Jesus more because he's the only one to give this people the peace the tacit all understanding pardon from sin and you know freedom from sin and you know uh, have the hearts be prepared to receive Jesus and his righteousness so friends that is the encouragement from the encouragement from the lord himself that even samuel says that he regards it as a sin if he ceases to pray for the lord's people and so may we have that heart of love to pray and join Jesus in his ministry of intercession. So we have a very beautiful material that was prepared by the Lord through our brother Frank in Frank um, Hazel. I, I pray that I am pronouncing his name right. It's Frank M. Hazel. And th this man has been gifted by the Lord. The Lord has afforded him wisdom to uh, let us know the priorities of our faith. So again, we are now on day five, getting more exciting and exciting, right? Um, day five, again, is entitled Focusing on Things That Matter in Our Prayers. And I would like to read a very beautiful material still written by Brother Frank. The title is Prayer That Pleases God. And our key text is found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. And the Lord says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Praise the Lord for this beautiful start of the model prayer that Jesus himself wants us to follow. But speaking of prayer, many prayers, even though disguised in a pious cloak, are in the final analysis based on wrong motives. Mm. It's kind of painful, isn't it? Like I pray and it's it's clothed and pious cloak, but it's based on wrong motives. I'll give you sets of examples. You see, I might pray for another person, but the real reason for my prayer is that I am afraid of losing a precious friendship. I might also pray for success in the cause of God, but I am also praying or playing an important role in it, and my influence will be strengthened strengthened if what I pray for succeeds. Selfish, right? I might also ask to be spared a defeat because I am afraid of malicious comments of others. I might also pray for help. But isn't the beloved John says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health as thy soul prospereth. So I need to pray for help. But sometimes I pray for help because I am afraid of pain and do not want to live a restricted or disabled life. I might also pray that someone's life be spared because I do not like living alone. Hmm. Am I speaking with someone? Am I talking to someone? I might pray for the conversion of a person because my life will then be easier. <laughs> I might also pray to find a sweetheart because I yearn for love and seek recognition. I might also ask God for specific things because I have become used to a certain standard of living and I'm not content with less. No, that's a lesson that uh, we need to remember from day one. Less is more. And friends, I might ask for success because I desire money and property and also like the admiration of others that goes along with it. Actually, friends, my prayers often center on myself. They speak about what I wish to have, what I want to receive from God, sometimes even in His name. But, we need to know, again, the title is Focusing on Things That Matter in Our Prayers. So, we need to please God still, even in our prayers. So, we know that most of our prayers center on self. But prayer that is pleasing to God has a refreshingly different focus. 
no longer is my want to have the center of my prayer. Instead, God becomes the central focus. This is the very important point. Friends, prayer that is pleasing to God, first and foremost, recognizes God as a faithful friend whose companionship I seek because he is important to me, not because I want something from him. Friends, again, yesterday was about fasting and you know, knowing what the focus on our fasting is for us to lose the bond of wickedness, of course, and for us to be in the presence of God. Not just to, you know, sacrifice a meal or two just for us to receive answers to our prayers. Again, it's not something that I do because I want something from him. It is because he is important to him. Uh, he is important to me. Sorry for that. He is important to me. And I want to seek his companionship. God's presence is much more important than the things he gives to me. More important than anything I can ask for is the desire to be with him. Without him, my life would lack its most important element. But in his presence, I feel sheltered. And without him, I don't want to live. That should be the, the, the feeling or the excitement, not just the feeling, but the experience we need to have in prayer. The thing that we need to realize is that without him, I don't want to live. This is the reason that I want to get to know him better. I want to learn from him. The time I spend with him is precious because he is precious to me. I can confide everything to him. He understands me. And I know that he loves me tenderly. This is why I long to be with him. This is the center of any true prayer. Prayer that is pleasing to God is focused on God. Not I, I, I want, I want. You know, God is your friend. And he wants to hear your wants and needs. The question is, are you a friend to God? Are you willing to listen to his needs, to his wants? And he needs you. He wants you to spend time with him because without him, he knows that you are nothing. He wants you to be called higher and higher and deeper and deeper into his presence. Again, prayer that is pleasing to God is focused on God. It begins with a personal communion with him, not with my wishes and requests. It's not about following specific religious formulas or adhering to specific prayer techniques. They do not guarantee the fulfillment of my wishes. But prayer that pleases God has him at the center and relates to him. When my request, even my intercessory prayers, are not anchored in this living relationship with him, they relate more to my wishes and my own well-being than to God and his will. May his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is the key text. Now, without this living friendship with God, my prayer resembles more the operation of a divine prayer machine. Now, what is a divine prayer machine? This is what a divine prayer machine looks like. I feed in my prayer requests at the one end and take out my granted wishes at the other. It's like a vending machine. Like you put the money and then you receive what you want, what you choose. Now, that's what a divine prayer machine looks like. But it should not work that way that you feed your prayer requests at one end and then take out your granted wishes at the other. Not like that. Prayer that pleases God, first of all, expresses my admiration and love for him. Once I understand that my relationship with God is the center of my prayer, my prayer gains a totally new focus. I begin to think from God's perspective. I, I tell him what is really on my heart, what makes me insecure, what makes me anxious, what I really desire deep inside, what I would rather avoid, what embarrasses me, and what gives me pleasure, what, what makes me shout with joy, and what drives me to despair. In short, I share my life with God, and I am willing to view every aspect of my life through his eyes. 
This perspective ennobles prayer. Now, friends, remove the relationship aspect of prayer and prayer becomes one-sided. And that is selfish and wrong. Friends, do you ask why, why do we have this beautiful ocean, this beautiful forest, mountains, these hills, the streams, the rivers, you know, this beautiful nature that God has given us? Though marred by sin, but, but it still testifies of the glory of its maker. These are still beautiful. Now, not as beautiful con compared to what he has given in Eden, with, with Adam and Eve, but still beautiful, right? It speaks of the love of our God. Because he wants you to ask about what you feel about these things. When you start to appreciate the, this beauty of nature and, and the love of God, that's why he has given the, this beautiful nature to us, surrounded us with these beauties. Now that, that builds relationship. Like, Lord, thank you for the, this river. Thank you for you are the water of life. Now you recognize him for who he is. And it gives you that, that knowledge of who he is so that you can have that deeper relationship with him. You cannot have a relationship with someone someone who do, you, you do not know. And so, friends, I encourage you to, as you appreciate the things surrounding you and the blessings God has been giving you, I pray that it will help you to recognize him for who he is and start building that strong relationship founded in that knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now, again, remove the relationship aspect of prayer and prayer becomes one side, one side that's selfish and God. Now, prayer that pleases God focuses on God because he is deeply interested in me. He longs to be part of me in all aspects of my life. My worries, my fears, my wishes, my hopes, even my wants and my abilities, my yearnings, my success, my honor, my recognition, my joy the ministry he has given me, even my possessions and money, my friendship, my needs, my health, my talents, even my plans, my love, and even my anger, my creativity, my energy, my thoughts, my admiration, and even my music, and even my songs, my praise, my gratitude, my appearance, in short, my entire life. I talk about these things with him as with a good friend, and I look at all of it through his eyes. That is how God is a friend to us. He wants to know everything. Though he knows it, but he is giving us this, this privilege to express. Now, the question is, if God is a friend to me, am I a friend to him? Because he also has his desires, his wants, his needs, his hopes. Friends, I pray that we will start to have that deeper connection with him. Priorities of faith. Priorities of faith. Prayer that pleases God frees my thinking from revolving around the big me, me, myself, and I. It allows me to become honest with myself and with God. In the light of his love and his holiness, I begin to see myself differently. Gently, I move toward the true purpose of prayer. Not the fulfillment of my wishes, but my relationship with the life-changing God. To pray in this way fills my life with the knowledge that He is the center of my life. My, my thoughts and wishes are in accordance with Him. To pray in this way is a real challenge. It is easy to pray as I am used to, right? In more than a thousand ways, I am told that God will give that which I ask Him. And my natural sinful heart insists that all my wishes be fulfilled. And it is easy to ask God for something before I have enjoyed His companionship and prayer. The fulfillment of my wishes often is more important than my relationship with Him. And it's sad. In realizing this, we need to have a New focus on what really matters in our prayers. Now, 
prayer that pleases God has God at its center. It opens up new perspectives for me. When I consciously think about his character, his abilities, and express my adoration for, for, for them in my own words, my prayers are filled with spiritual life and even have an element of reverence and admiration that goes along with them. My problems and needs are not the center of my prayers, but God is the center. God becomes the center. I would like to share an experience. Like a month ago, I was invited to speak at a week of prayer in one of our um, academies. So I was invited and I shared about prayer, faith, and the deep study of the word. But I was also asked by the head teacher to spend time the whole day to speak with parents, to speak especially with students, and, you know, introduce Jesus with them and share Jesus. Share Jesus and his great love to humanity. And 90% of the students are not Seventh-day Adventists. And so as I began to meet students, um, student after student, as I spend like 10 to 15 minutes with a lot of students every day. I, I I started to pray, how can I introduce Jesus with these people? So with each problem that they are sharing, problems financially with their families, with their identity, with academics, I asked them, now who is Jesus for you today? And uh, first meeting, they could not answer. Is they were just focused on their problems, not to the one who can solve their problems. So they're embracing the blessings or the problems, not the one who is giving the solution, not the one who's giving the blessings to, to, to each of them. So the first meeting, they could not answer. And so I, I was telling the student, so the next time we will meet tomorrow, let's meet at this specific time again. And then let's discuss who is Jesus for you today. How he, is he revealing himself to you today? And so the next day came and I, I met with students again. And there's this one specific student I will never forget. He said, Kuya Diomar. Kuya is uh, an endearment we use to address a specific elderly person. Kuya Diomar, I've learned that Jesus is my joy. And then I asked why. You know, Kuya Diomar, yesterday I was just sharing about my problems. And today, I still woke up with those problems. I went to school with those problems. Then those problems always make me sad. But then I realize there is someone greater than those problems. There is someone greater and more powerful than my problems. And it is Jesus. And with that thinking, Kuya Dilmar, I became more joyful. Now, Amidst this chaos, amidst the problems, I can still find joy because Jesus is with me. So today, Kuya Diomar, Jesus is my joy. And so day after day, I as I stay there for one whole week, for the week of prayer, the students share with me who Jesus is for them. And so Jesus is infinite. And so we could, we could look at different aspects or different angles and see Jesus differently every day. So I encourage you every day, who is Jesus for you? Jesus is my black. And with that, we uh, begin to know his character more and we, be, uh, we begin to have a deeper knowledge of who he is and we, we appreciate him more and we will be desiring after knowing him to have a deeper relationship with him because he is the only one who is the glorious answer to all our questionings, because Jesus do with all things well. So I encourage you, after you pray, or I spend as you spend the whole day in prayer and in service, doing your work, or being with people, observe. Observe on how God is working. Observe who Jesus is for you that day. It can, it can be more than one. And so today, I woke up with a little bit of, you know, worries on what will happen for uh, this year. But Jesus is my security. Jesus is my security. So that is Jesus is for me today. 
So with that, despite all my insecurities, despite all the uncertainties around, despite the failed plans I have, Jesus is still my security. And so whenever I am discouraged, I think of that. In Jesus, I am secured. I am enveloped in his love. I am nestled in his loving arms. Praise the Lord. So going back, prayer that pleases God means to step into his presence. It is an expression of my relationship with him. Prayer does not bring God down to me, but it lifts me up into his presence. Prayer does not change God. It changes me. Friends, begin to pray like that. Try it out. It will change your life. It's very, very, very beautiful. It's a beautiful experience, friends. Again, try it. Try it, friends. So let's go to our um, key text. Um, two verses for today. This is not the one. This was for the first day. Where is that? Here we go. Sorry. There's some technical difficulties. Here we go. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. It says here, after this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How will this teach us how to prioritize God? Mm. Now, let us dissect again the verse. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. See, it recognizes who God is. He is our kind Heavenly Father. He is God. But He's not only our God. He is our Father. See? A father and a child. He invites us to have that relationship. He is almighty. He is all-knowing. He is all-wonderful and magnificent. He is beautiful and marvelous. He is truth. He is righteousness. He is love. It's not just an attribute of God, but God is love. So, May we desire to know Him so much more. And may we experience that daily appreciation of His character. See, it's personal. That's why Jesus is not just the world Savior. He is your personal Savior. Because He wants you to get better acquainted of who He is. To appreciate His character, His abilities, His personality, and His will. Now, may the Holy Spirit free us from selfish focus and make our prayers centered around Him. Amen? Amen. May that be our prayer. Now, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done where? In earth as it is in heaven. This is very beautiful because I like theocracy because His kingdom is the only governmental entity I want to pledge my full allegiance to. Why? Because Jesus reigns in love. That is a government of love. Unconditional love. His government, government reigns in truth, in justice, and in righteousness. Now, my ideas, my plans, my methods are imperfect. But His will is always perfect. Now, may this kingdom be spread out into my heart and in my life today. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will Make known to us who he is. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, we will know God for all throughout eternity. We will study the plan of salvation for all throughout eternity. So why not begin here? Because that is his will in heaven. May it be done here in earth. But we won't know it unless we know the one who hears our prayers. So friends, this is our this is our lesson for today on how to prioritize faith again day five we still have five more days and the final sabbath celebration friends i pray that we will know god even deeper not just to get answers from him but to embrace him as the one who gives the blessings 
because with him, he is more than enough. And so friends, um, I would like us to sing um, the song again. Fill my cup, Lord. This is very, very beautiful. Let me just share my screen again. Before we pray, let us sing, fill my cup, Lord. And he's the one who's filling our empty cup. And as it will be whole and filled up to the brim, we can share him with other people. Again, we cannot share what we do not have. We keep on hearing that. So it is true. Now, Jesus, we cannot share him with others. So let us have more and more of Jesus Christ. friends so we praise the lord for this beautiful journey of prayer and i pray that as we have learned the real focus the real focus on our prayers that matters most i pray that we will have a deeper deeper experience with jesus our savior not only in prayer but as we live daily waiting and preparing for his soon coming. So I invite everyone, those who are able, to kneel with me as we pray. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, 
we praise you. We praise you for thou art faithful. Thank you so much that you cannot even deny your faithfulness. Dear Lord, we give you glory. We give you praises and our admiration and adoration. Not just because you deserve it, but because you are worthy of all these praises. Help us to give you our all in response to all of you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that the focus of prayer is to have you. Because with you, you're more than enough. You have given your all for this world. You have given your all for me. And so I pray that every day I will appreciate mm -hmm. this. Every day I will, I will think of this. And it will bring me to a deeper conviction for me to choose you every day. So dear Lord, thank you so much. Because I can say I love you because you love me first. I thank you because I can choose you because every day you keep on choosing me. You're taking that risk. Thank you so much, dear Heavenly Father. That your love overpowers the pain that I give you. Dear Lord, there are many a people in this world who are hurting, who are in deep pain, who are experiencing chaos, war, experiencing poverty and hunger, experiencing loneliness and deep agony. But I pray, dear Lord, they will realize that in Jesus, despite the war, we can have peace. In Jesus, despite the physical hunger, the physical thirst, we can be filled and the thirst can be quenched through this righteousness. I know in the pattern of the Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught his disciples to ask for the daily bread. But before that, we need to acknowledge you and recognize you as the one who gives this daily prayer. So dear Lord, help me to have a new focus in prayer, to focus more on you more than my problems. Because just like a camera, a digital camera, when you focus on one thing, the rest is blurred. And so when we focus on Jesus, there will still be problems, of course. Those things will be blurred. Just like the song says, Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Dear Lord, this 10 days of prayer has been a great journey so far. We're still on our fifth day. We still have five days and, and another day for this final Sabbath celebration. So thank you so much for this deep experience with you. And please, Lord, let a mighty revival of primitive godliness sweep your people in this final days. May you help us to stand for truth, though the heavens fall. May this revival start within me. With this, dear Lord, show us. Show us how to be consistent in our daily worship, individually and as a family. Pray that this will start with me to have a deeper connection with you so I can share you with others. Open my eyes, dear Lord. Open our eyes to the destructions in our lives. Maybe this destruction is in our social media accounts, in our devices, in our gadgets, or even in the relationships you have not written. Please, dear Lord, open our eyes to the things that keep us from being able to focus entirely on you. Give us undivided hearts of worship. And thank you. Thank you that as we live a Holy Spirit-filled life, it will result to a Holy Spirit-empowered ministry so that the whole world will know that you are the God who lives forevermore. Dear Lord, help us to appreciate all the things that you are giving us and you're allowing us to experience. Help us to wake up each morning if it pleases you to wake up us each morning, no matter how early. Help us, dear Lord, to have that sweet and rush time with your word of prayer. And plead, help us to plead for the daily baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for our church leaders, from the president down to the least, the general conference down to the unions, divisions, the, the local churches and districts. I pray that each member, each member of the church will have the deeper desire to know you more until the whole earth is lightened with your glory. Help us as a church to stand for truth that can unite us into one purpose of spreading the gospel. May our lifestyle be in line with the mission and the message we need to give the whole world. And I pray that you will keep each one as a gem brightly shining on Jesus' crown. Help us, help us to shine more and more for you. And thank you that in our brokenness, Jesus' light can shine through and through. Thank you for choosing us again and again. Thank you for all that you've done. Dear Lord, forgive us for all of our doubts and our infidelity and our unfaithfulness. Help us to live the life of Christ here on earth. Help us to testify of his great love for humanity. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to live as Jesus lived here on earth. To have that priority of faith. To prioritize you more than anything else. Thank you. Because you will help us. Because without you, we can do nothing. But with Jesus, we can do all things. Because he is our strength. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord again, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. We praise the Lord for allowing us to continue on in this journey of prayer. So tomorrow, friends, it will be another topic that will be shared with us by Brother Ronald Robin. The title for day six is Grit, Passion, and Perseverance. What uh, are these aspects of life will teach us about priorities of faith. So again, praise the Lord and thank you so much for joining us. God bless you everyone and may you spend the day filled with love of Jesus Christ. God bless you all.